Your auto light dealer presents your favorite friends from Gasoline Alley. <laughs> Hold it, Wilmer. Hold it till I get this phone. Okay, Skazak. Wallet and Bobble Garage. Skazak's wallet speaking. What's that? Yes, sir. We can fix it. We can fix anything on four wheels. Sure. We'll be waiting for you right here in Gasoline Alley. <laughs> Yes, it's Gasoline Alley, the comic strip that's a favorite in more than a hundred great newspapers. In this episode, the adventure of the agitated announcer, Skeezix and Wilmer visit a radio station. The result? Well, it's quite a bit of consternation. At first, a word from the friendly Autolite dealer in your own hometown. has learned from past experience that when his partner, Wilmer Bobble, gets a big idea, the big idea usually pays off in plenty of trouble. And so as Wilmer arrived at the garage for work this morning, what has he got? You guessed it, a big idea. Like so. Hey, Skeezix, wait to hear what I've thought up for it. Boy, is this terrific. Good morning, Wilmer. You're late for work. Late for work, he says. Listen, I work all night tossing and turning in bed. Oh, I'm sorry. Something you ate? Skeezix, I was awake because I was thinking. I don't sleep well when I'm thinking. Oh, all right, what's the big idea this time? Sometimes, Skeezix, I almost get the feeling that you don't appreciate all I do for you. This'll double our business, it'll triple it. It'll How much will it cost, Wilmer? That's the beauty part of it. It don't cost a red nickel. Now, look, all we got to do to get more business than we can handle is to get a lot of free publicity. Simple. Huh? Oh, now, wait a minute, Wilmer. Getting publicity takes skill and experience. It, it takes, takes brains, Skeezix. And when it comes to brains... Boy, I'm loaded. All right, brain boy, you're going to get a lot of free publicity for the garage. But how? Very simple. Everybody likes a picture of pretty girls on bathing suits, right? Right. Okay, so we get some pretty girls on bathing suits here in the garage, and we'll get their pictures in the paper. Now, what do you say to that? Well, it doesn't matter what I say, Wilmer, but um, what will Jessica say? Uh, Jessica. Hey, Jessica, do you mean um, Jessica? Your ever-loving wife with the strong right arm. Well, uh, on um, on second thoughts, Skeezix, maybe bathing beauties here in the garage ain't quite the right answer. Uh, these days, these days cost too much to waste in a black eye. But so I... let's forget it, Wilmer, and get to work. Oh, I'll think of another way, Skeezix. Don't worry about that. I'll hold it, Wilmer. We've got a customer. Oh, hey, it's Mr. Whitby, the manager of the radio station. Hi, boys. Hi, Hi. Mr. Whitby. What can we do for you? Well, there's something wrong with the old bus, Skeezix. Uh -huh. She's hard to start, and then sometimes when she's rolling along, the motor goes dead on her. Oh, it sounds like ignition trouble. You better let us have a look at it. Sure, we'll have a fix in no time. Oh, that's fine, boys. When can I get it? Well, unless we run into something unexpected, we should have it fixed up by 2 o'clock this afternoon. 2 o'clock? No, no, I couldn't come and get it then. This afternoon at 2, I'll be holding auditions for the big community fun packet. We, uh, broadcast it, you know. Oh, you sure had a swell show last year, Mr. Whitby. Me and Jessica tuned it in, and we just howled. You howled? Yeah, boy, was it funny. <laughs> That's very strange. It wasn't supposed to be funny. As a matter of fact, it was quite serious. Uh, yeah, that, that's what I mean. It was quite serious. Uh, 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 yeah, yes, Jessica and me, we nearly cried. It was beautiful. I see. Uh, uh, Mr. Whitby, I'll bet you've got a lot of good acts this year. Oh, we've got plenty of talent for the show, all right, but we seem to be stuck for a narrator. Uh, a who writer? A narrator, Wilmer. The master of ceremonies. The head man. Uh, just, 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 just a minute, Mr. Whitby. Uh, just, just what does this narrator fellow have to do? Why, the narrator's the most important part of the show, Wilmer. He introduces all the acts. Keeps the audience happy between the acts and ties the whole show together. Well, now, that don't seem too difficult. Oh, it takes a man with a lot of personality and perfect diction. A man that can think fast on his feet. Takes brains, huh? Uh, 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 tell me, Mr. Whitby, will this uh, narrator feller get any publicity? Oh, yes, indeedy. His picture will be in the paper almost every day. Oh, gosh, I've got to get down to the station. picture in the paper every day, huh? Oh, Mr. Whitby. Yes, well, Now, uh, don't worry about your car. As soon as we get it fixed, I'll take it down to a radio station in person. Oh, thank you, Wilmer. Well, so long, boys. Well, 
Well, it's nice of you to offer to do that, Wilmer. Nice nothing, Skeezix. I'm doing this for the publicity I'll get for the garage. What do you mean by that? Well, simple. When I get down to the station, I'll just audition for that narrator part. Also, I'll win it. But, Wilmer, you heard Mr. Whitby say the narrator has to have perfect diction. Sure, and that's exactly what I've got. I've won diction prizes. I've won gold medals for my diction. Only... Yes, only what? Only, uh, Skeezix, uh, what is diction? Now back to Gasoline Alley and the adventure of the agitated announcer. Well, Wilmer has decided to give a radio audition in an effort to get the part of narrator in the big annual community fund pageant, which is broadcast every year. So well, now the boys are at the radio station, Skeezix having come along to keep Wilmer out of trouble. He hopes. Wilmer, this is just another one of your harebrained ideas. You don't know a thing about announcing or public speaking. How can you possibly be narrator of the pageant? Jesus, haven't you got any faith in me? I've got personality, haven't I? Well... I've got brains, haven't I? Well, uh... Jesus, look, if I get it, the job, I mean, it will mean a lot of free publicity for the garage. It's not myself I'm thinking about. It's the business. Yeah, yeah. When you get up on that podium in front of all those people, you'll get the business. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I'll get the business. Hey, wait a minute. What do you mean? Oh, excuse me. There's Mr. Whitby, the radio station manager. Hello, Mr. Whitby. Uh, uh, Mr. Whitby, I'm here for my audition for the narrator's part. Of oh, it. yes, yes. Uh, excuse me. Uh, did you get my car fixed? Oh, we sure did, Mr. Whitby. Cleaned up your audition trouble and put in a new set of spark plugs. It's purring like a kitten. Uh, Mr. Whitby, uh, I'm ready. Hmm? Ready for what? Uh, the audition. The audition. You know, the audition. Oh, uh, uh, look, Wilma, an announcer's job isn't easy. We thought it over and decided we want a really professional speaker for the pageant. Wow. Do you think you're professional? Plus, just show me that microphone and let me get going. Oh, very well, Wilma. Let's make this fast. Now, if you two boys will go into Studio B, not A, but B, I'll run around to my office, and when you see the red light go on, you start speaking. Uh, just about anything? No, 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 no. Here's the audition script I have in my pocket here. Now, this is a test of your concentration and your ability to speak under all circumstances. Don't let anything phase you or stop you until the red light goes off. Oh, I don't worry about me. Nothing is going to stop me. I'm not going to like this. Okay, Steve. When I get this job, maybe you'll change your tune. All right, now, Wilma. Just go into the studio, and when the red light goes on, I'll be listening in my office. And I'll come back to the studio and tell you how it is. Don't worry about me. This is an awesome racket of duck too. Come on, Steve. Let's go away. No, no, Wilma. Not that door. That's Studio A. Oh, that's what he said, Studio A. He said, and I quote, Studio A, not B. I thought it was the other way around. Steve, don't try to confuse me. Well, let's go in. Oh, look, the red light is on already. The sign says, on the air. But, we're on. Hey, we're on the air in here. <laughs> I know, I'm having an audition. <laughs> this is just one of Mr. Whitby's hey, tricks to upset me. I'm going on the air right now with my harmonica. <clears throat> Folks, for my first number today, I'm about to play the overture from Orpheus. Oh, no, you don't. Get away from that microphone, you. I'm going to do my audition for Mr. Whitby. Now, wait a minute. Maybe, right. maybe we are in the wrong studio. Let me handle this. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, so do I. <laughs> oh, that's the way you want it. Okay, I'll show you. Ahem. Ladies and gentlemen, we are assembled here to dedicate this monument to that eminent American, Wilmer, Wilmer J. Bob. Oh, no, 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 no. I need to say, now, let's speak. Don't interrupt me, will you? Ahem. The theme of the pageant is to depict the growth of this fair metropolis, how uh, it has grown. It has grown. From a small hamlet to the thriving industrial center, uh, center. it is today. Uh -huh. Go back through the years with me, friends, if you will. In your mind's eye heart, uh, hark back, if you will, to those early days when this fair city of ours was a tiny omelet. I mean hamlet. I mean hamlet! What you will, you maniac? Get away from that microphone. Everybody in town is listening to you. You're on the air. What? <laughs> no, you don't, Mr. Whitby. <laughs> you can't fool me. I know this is part of that pad. Test! What you need is a sanity test. You walked into the wrong studio. That gibberish that you were spouting has been going out over the air. The station's flooded with telephone calls. Awful. Oh, I'm good, huh? Good! We're the dead Bobble. You set radio broadcasting back 20 years. <laughs> I'm sorry, 
sorry, Wilmer, but everybody seems to have been listening when you were on the air this afternoon. I know. I'm the laughing stock of the town. Jesus. Oh, oh gosh, here comes Mr. Whitby. Oh, God. Wilmer! Wilmer! I've been looking all over town for you. Okay, Mr. Whitby, I'm ready to go to jail. Jail? Jail? Nothing here, my boy. Look at the clarion. The picture's on the front page. God. It says Wilmer Bobble and funniest broadcast of the year. Wilmer, things aren't so bad. I'll say they aren't. Why, the station owner's already congratulated you. And, of course, Wilmer, we'll want you in the pageant. Gosh, Mr. Whitby, as narrator? Well, now, not as narrator, no. We're doing a Shakespearean scene in which there are two lovers and a clown. By public demand, Wilmer, you're going to play the fool. <laughs> Our ghastly Dolly friends will be back in just a moment. Now a word from your own Autolite dealer. And now a word about the next adventure in Gasoline Alley. Here's Skeezix. Oh, Wilmer, you look terrible. What's the matter? I can't sleep, Skeezix. There's a guy next door who keeps singing Rock in the Cradle of the Deep all night long. Well, don't you like the song? Not the way he sings it. Let me tell you something, Skeezix. If that guy sings it once more, I'm going to rock him. And I mean rock. <laughs> Right. <laughs> 